One of the last topics in derivatives that we need to cover is called L'Hopital's rule, which lets us cover um, complicated limits uh, under a specific but pretty common set of circumstances. Um, but before I talk about that, I want to go back and review kind of what we already talked about limits back in the first unit towards the beginning of the year. Um, and that's going to give us some sort of framework for moving forward and talking about what L'Hopital's rule says. So let me head off to my document camera. So let's say that we wanted to calculate the limit as x approaches a of some quotient of functions. Remember, this was something we did a lot in the first unit. And this looks an awful lot like difference quotients themselves. Um, and so one of the things that we can do is we can look at the behavior of f and g. And that can give us some concept of the behavior of their quotient. And this was one of the things, we didn't make this chart back at the beginning of the year, but we very well could have. Um, thinking about the limit as x approaches a of f of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And the limit could either approach zero or it could approach infinity or it could approach some actual number somewhere between them. Let's ignore negative numbers for the, for the time being. That just makes things more complicated than they need to be. Um, that just influences the sign of the answer. And then the same thing could be true of g of x. It could either approach 0, it could approach infinity, or it could approach some other number c prime. If, neither, if either one of these limits don't exist, then the limit of the quotient obviously doesn't exist. But one of the things we talked about back in unit one was we talked about some basic rules that if, if we could just plug A into this equation and it came up with an answer, then that was obviously going to be our answer. So if the limit of the numerator was C and the limit of the denominator was C prime, then we could say that the limit of the quotient was just C over C prime. Another thing that we said was um, that let's say that the denominator is approaching some fixed number, but the numerator isn't. The numerator is either approaching zero or it's approaching infinity. Well, what we realized is that this behavior is going to overrule this, this behavior here. Remember the example where we were thinking about, um, for instance, the limit as x approaches infinity the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 1 million. And even though 1 million is a really big number, x becomes much bigger as x approaches infinity. So the behavior of the numerator overshadowed the value of the denominator, even though the denominator was large. And we said that that limit was equal to infinity. Same thing would be true if we were approaching zero, that no matter what this bottom number was, the top number approaching zero would effectively become much more important than, than the denominator, and so the limit there would equal zero. So let's put those in. So if the numerator is approaching infinity and the denominator is approaching some fixed number, and this was, I believe, what we called rule two in, in the functions. And the other thing we talked about was rule three, which said what happens if the numerator approaches some number, you know, so we have, let's say the limit as x approaches infinity, where the numerator is, let's say 1 million, and the denominator is x. Well, the numerator is really, really big. So this seems like it would be a big number. You're dividing 1 million by 1 or 1 million by 2. That feels like a really big number. But eventually, x gets so big that this becomes a tiny number. You're dividing a million by a billion or dividing a million by a trillion and going on from there. Again, it doesn't matter what the numerator is doing because the denominator is getting so big the fraction is eventually going to become really, really, really close to zero. And speaking in terms of limits, we're going to say that the limit is equal to zero. OK, so as the denominator gets big while the numerator stays fixed, the limit is going to be equal to zero. And the opposite is true if the denominator gets really, really small as the denominator stays fixed. OK, so let's think about these things in the middle. 
So let's say that we've got this case right here where the numerator is getting really, really big and the denominator is getting really, really small. Okay, so um, in that case, the numerator getting really, really big would say this is approaching infinity. The denominator getting really, really small would say um, this is approaching infinity. Numerator getting really, really big says this is approaching infinity. And so that quotient is also going to approach infinity. And the same thing happens if we've got a limit where the numerator is getting smaller and smaller, closer to zero, and the denominator is getting bigger and bigger. You've got a smaller number of cookies divided among an ever larger number of people. It's just all the more true that this is going to become zero over time. All right, so we've almost filled this out, except that we've got these two leftover things. And so this is called I'll write this as zero over zero, and I'll write this as infinity over infinity. And these are interesting cases. These are what we call indeterminate forms. Indeterminate forms. And the reason we say that is because I really have no idea what that limit actually is, just from knowing that their limits are the limit of the numerator is infinity and the limit of the denominator is infinity, that doesn't give me any idea at all of what the limit of the quotient is. And remember, we kind of did this, and we didn't kind of do it, we actually did it, in unit one. So if we had something where the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over x, for instance, well, that is just substituting infinity into both of these. Both of these are approaching infinity, but the limit of the quotient actually approached infinity because the numerator was getting bigger faster than the denominator, much faster. And so remember that simplified to x over one, which approaches infinity. Another thing is if the cases were flipped, if we had x over x squared, that also is infinity over infinity, but you could kind of simplify that as one over x, which approaches zero. And the last case is maybe we would think about the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x over x. Once again, just substituting in infinity, we've got this infinity over infinity indeterminate form. But that doesn't tell us that kind of if we cancel out the 3, we've got the limit as 3 over 1. And so that limit is equal to 3. So just knowing that the limit, all of these are of the form infinity over infinity, but we could see that the limit actually either approaches infinity, could approach zero, or it could approach some number in the middle. And that was the case for infinity over infinity. The same thing would be true if we talk about a limit approaching zero over zero. So that's what we mean when we talk about indeterminate forms. There are a couple other indeterminate forms, but these are the ones we're actually going to focus on uh, in, in introductory calculus class. In the next video, I'm going to talk about L'Hopital's rule, which gives us a technique for solving cases like this, where we've got that indeterminate form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And it's really helpful.